Hey guys, so still in Hamburg, freezing cold, unbelievably cold. I honestly can't express how much my body has had a shock coming from Tanzania to this. <sighs> but I'm about to go for a run. And before I do, something's been on my mind since yesterday. It's been on my mind a little bit anyway. Last year it was on my mind in Hamburg. And it's about homeless people in the West. I mean, I'm speaking about Europe, but it's the same everywhere. And I think there's a problem in society. Of course, there's a problem that we have homeless people, but there's a problem inside the consciousness and the perception of people living inside the European society when it comes to homeless people. This is what I, I have a belief of. Now, I've spotted it yesterday. There were a lot of homeless people out and about, sitting on the floor, many layers of clothes on, freezing cold. And very few people even looked at them. They didn't want to make eye contact with them because they knew it would make them feel like they had to give them some money, perhaps, or they, were, they would have to engage with them in some way. And yesterday evening, we were leaving a supermarket and I had in my pocket a a load of euros in change, maybe like five or six euro. And a young girl came and said, can you spare a euro so I can get something to eat? And I just handed her the change from my pocket. Now, I'm under, still within my life, the belief system that God will create a synchronicity at the right time, meaning certain people will be brought to you who genuinely are hungry, and they will ask you the question and they're brought to you because God expects you to assist them or to help them. Now, this is said with uh, Christian teachings. If someone asks for something, give them something, but you know, don't necessarily always give them what they ask for. However, here's the thing I see. Many persons have a different perception now of homeless people. They say, I'm not going to give them anything because they're just going to waste it all on alcohol or they're going to waste it on drugs and I get that. I understand where people are coming from. But it's not true that all homeless people are like this. And you should keep this in mind. Homeless people can just be normal guys. Now, I'm going to tell you two stories that I've never spoken about on camera before. And it's about my life before I moved to Tanzania. Now, I was living in Newcastle and... One night it was bitter cold, freezing cold, and I went out for a walk and I went walking around the city and I kind of felt a little bit overtaken in myself, meaning sometimes, as, as I've said, I'll go and do things without really being fully present of what I'm doing or subtle nudges get me to go somewhere, especially when I'm very light or fasting. And I walked up the main shop. It was late at night as well. It was like after midnight and I couldn't rest or settle. And I walked up the main shopping street in Newcastle called Northumberland Street. And at the top I saw a homeless guy. And at the time I used to smoke. And he asked me if I had a spare cigarette. And I said, yes, I do. And I took the time that day to talk to him because I had a funny feeling I wasn't living a life of service with God, but I'd gotten to the point where I was asking God for something more fulfilling. And I was asking him with a lot of fasting and prayer at the time to help me to live a life in line with what he needs me to do to serve him. And chance would have it, I'd gone for this long walk feeling unsettled and found this homeless guy. And his name was Gavin. And he had his hand bandaged up and he looked a very unwelcoming character he had a, a broken hand he looked like he'd been fighting he's, he's a little bit scruffy around the edges and he's sleeping on the street naturally most people think it's a little bit of a who knows what he's been through an inti intimidating image but for the first time in my life I took time to get to know a homeless person and find out why and I asked him why are you here what's going on what happened to your hand First thing he told me about was his hand. His hand had been stepped on whilst he was sleeping and it was stepped on by a drunk, someone out partying, getting drunk, 
and he was sleeping in an alleyway with some bins and someone had gone there to go to the toilet and the guy had stepped on him and broken one of his fingers in his hand whilst he did. Don't know whether it was intentional or not, he said, but he was stepped on by a drunk. This is why he had a broken hand. Not his fault that his hand's bandaged up. So the next thing I said, why are you out on the street? You know, I was like, you seem like a, a, a nice guy, etc. And he told me a story about how he'd been for a night out. He was working as a painter and decorator and he'd been for a night out. And the following morning, driving the boss's van to work, he had an accident. And he blew a very low positive when he was breathalyzed. So he was deemed as drink driving. This cost his boss a lot because he didn't have the insurance, etc. It was not covered correctly or whatever. He lost his job and subsequently he wound up homeless within a month of that happening. And that is a normal mistake that a normal human could make in the West where drinking culture is quite normal and quite a large thing. Just so happens he had an accident in the morning. Arguably he would have had that accident whether he had a drink the night before or not, who knows. But he was a normal working guy down on his luck and... It just shows you that a lot of the time, homeless people, they're not just a drug addict. They're not just someone trying to get money out of you. They're people who need help. They need help and they need you to make eye contact, contact with them. They need you to reach out and share with them. Now, another time, which was a, a harder story for me, was a, a young boy called Richard. I walked past him again in Newcastle. And, oh, by the way, with that guy... I'll tell you something which happened that night. I went home to get him a sleeping bag. It was freezing cold and I went home to get him a sleeping bag. And all the way through Newcastle City Centre, the CCTV cameras followed me. They twisted on every street as I went home to get the sleeping bag and as I brought it back for this homeless guy. Because it's suspicious for someone to help a homeless person. I'd obviously been seen talking, talking to him and it was suspicious I was helping him. That's why I presume was going on. Or they were just intrigued, whatever. But all the CCTV cameras followed me. And it was while I was getting him a sleeping bag that I don't use. So he was grateful. I saw him again since. And he said he was much warmer at night, blah, blah. Had I been what I know now about myself, I would have helped him more. But at the time, I I wasn't as developed as I am now. So that was the limit of what I went to, some money, a sleeping bag and some cigarettes, which aren't very helpful. But I remember not long after this, as I say, I met this young guy and he was sitting in the middle of a very busy street wearing a white dressing gown, like a bathrobe. If you're from another country, you might know it as. And nobody was looking at this kid he was young you could see he was young no one was looking at him again I, and i know what it is it's a i don't want to engage with him he might be up to no good he's probably trying to scam me and i i walked over and i i sat down next to him and he started laughing and he was like it's cold what are you doing and i was like i want to talk to you and i said like you know what's your name like why are you here and this guy he was only like 19 years old 19 or 20 and he had a little sister and his parents had died and it was a true story this was a real story it's not some blag or some nonsense i genuinely sat down with these these young men and and got to know them because i took an interest they were happy to tell the truth and his parents had died first his father then his mother and when his mother died he wound up with uh, one of his siblings and his little sister all living together in this house and he and his sibling being young people who had just had a recently deceased parent had a party and social services came saw what was going on and took the young child away the older sibling disappeared involved in drugs and he was left on his own and eventually they lost the house because based on the council benefits they were supposed to of the house because it was a, a family set up where they had the child etc it's not for a single male and he was a single male at that point and a young male very young so he lost his home and he wound up homeless and he'd been homeless for like six weeks or something when i met him 
And for sure, he was involved in things he shouldn't be, alcohol and drugs and smoking cigarettes, etc. However, of course he is. You know, you've lost your loved ones and then you're out on the street by yourself. And the dressing gown he was wearing was his mum's dressing gown. And I knew, I knew that if 10% of the people walking down the street knew what they were looking at when they saw that scruffy looking boy with his... Uh, with his bathrobe on a dressing gown, as I would say, that they would reach out and want to help him. But most of them have a pre-programmed thing where they say, no, they're going to use my money for drugs. It won't truly help them. And this is a major problem, guys, because... So what if they're going to use it for drugs? What if they use some for drugs and some to get themselves somewhere comfortable to, to sleep. And in those places where they get somewhere comfortable to sleep, you get the people who are there who are able to help and to help them to rebuild their lives. Most working persons use their money for drugs. Most of them use it for drugs. So, you know, this conception of, ah, you know, let them sort themselves out, it's very wrong. There's a reason people end up so downtrodden and broken. And people don't choose to be homeless, guys. No one wants to be homeless. People don't choose to be taking drugs whilst they're homeless. People don't do it. But the thing is, when you dig into it, you find that people have normal stories and tiny little things can happen to us that would create that. I mean, God forbid, but it could happen with I. I'm never going to have any money in my life now. What about later in life if my family are no longer present on the planet and uh, Tanzania all of a sudden breaks out into civil war, kicks me out of the country and I'm alone. What happens? I become homeless until the government provides me with something. doesn't mean I'd be a bad person because I'm homeless and you don't know the story of those men and women who you don't make eye contact with. And I just want to remind everyone because even in my position where I don't have a lot of money. The money I have now is the money it's been given to me for Christmas. And I'm still willing to share with someone who needs something to eat. Naturally. And everybody should be. And it doesn't take much to sit with a person and treat them like a human being. And put your hand on their shoulder and say, Hey, what, what happened? Why are you out here in this cold weather by yourself? Where's your family? Where's your home? Why don't you have a home anymore? Are you okay? What can I do to help you other than a bite to eat or a handful of change? Is there anything else I can do? You know? And this is all I wanted to speak about because I keep seeing people not looking. And they're not looking because there's this pre-programmed thing in our minds that homeless people are trying to scam us. And it's just 90% of the time not the case. And the reason we don't know is because we don't take time to treat them like a human being and ask them if they're okay. You know, if, if you saw me now and you know my face sitting on the street a year from now, you would come and try and help me. But just because you know my past, but you don't know the past of the guy sitting on the floor. They might very well have been doing something similar to I and ended up caught out by the system because they've been volunteering as an aid worker and now they're stuck homeless somewhere. So, yeah. Just a reminder, guys, you don't have to go to far off lands to be... to help people. And here in the West, where there, it's not... you don't even have to fight to find the resources to help people. It breaks my heart that it's simply the only problem facing those homeless persons outside in this city today, tonight, in this freezing weather. The only problem and the only place the problem needs to be fixed is inside human brains because the resources are there for them very, very clearly. It's not like in Tanzania where I have to fight and find the resources. Here in the West, they're here. But there's invisible walls inside people's minds and psyche that don't allow those resources to get to the people who need them tonight. And this is what we need to work on doing. That's why we need to give birth to the Christ within ourselves in meditation so we can help people. Because believe me, I'm guilty of it. 
There was a time in my life where I would just step over a homeless person. A time in my life where I'd ignore them. Not proud of it, but I know why. The societal thing that they're all scamming us or tricking us. It's just nonsense. The men and women who need us, ultimately. And by us, I mean those who have. So, okay. Much love. Bye, guys. I need a